what I like about China is that everything at the end of the day, everything is possible. Mm -hmm. There is a solution for everything if you mm -hmm. keep your calm mm -hmm. and really think about things and don't act too aggressively and too fast. Mm -hmm. You can find a solution for anything actually in China. So this is speeding up is regarded as a weakness by Chinese. Yes, I think. for sure. You have to go. You have to calm. You have to be a calm person in China. Yes. You can't lose your temper. Yes. In China, this is this shows big weakness in China. Yes. People will for sure leave you as well, employees, if you can't do that. Mm -hmm. I recognize that. I learned that in South China actually mm -hmm. when we first mm -hmm. started. So. Till I came to Beijing, I knew that, mm -hmm. and I completely changed my my own whole attitude yes. about that. Mm -hmm. And this is what I like about China, that you can solve anything, that things change very fast, mm -hmm. and that you always get new opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's not like there is no, it doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. Even if the one thing doesn't work out, you can be, if you keep going, you can be sure that something new will come up. Mm -hmm. This is what I really like about China, and this is what makes China much easier, for my opinion, than like Germany or Turkey, mm -hmm. the two countries that I know a little better. Mm -hmm. And the hard things are to get arrangements with Chinese people, mm -hmm. like to to get business partners in mm -hmm. China is not that hard, mm -hmm. but to really get the arrangement with them is mm -hmm. very hard because. Mm -hmm. It goes, everything goes very slow, everything, they have time, mm -hmm. it's no problem for them. Mm -hmm. You are the one who perhaps doesn't have mm -hmm. time, but they mm -hmm. have all the time mm -hmm. of the world. Mm -hmm. This is sometimes very hard, because mm -hmm. you are sitting there and waiting mm -hmm. for answers. Mm -hmm. This is hard. In the company itself, finding people, human resources, very hard. Finding motivated people. Mm -hmm people with potential mm -hmm. uh, is very hard. Mm -hmm. So I can say we hired many, many people mm -hmm. in South China and also in, in, in Beijing now. And in South China we had, I'm not sure, 40 people perhaps hired mm -hmm. who came and left or 50. Mm -hmm. But people where I say I'm really happy that I meet, met these people and mm -hmm. I, that I worked together with these mm -hmm. people who really added something to the business. Mm -hmm. In South China, to be honest, there are three, mm -hmm. <laughs> just three. Mm -hmm. One is my assistant there, one is my cook, the head chef or the head chef of the production and another one is a waiter, mm -hmm. but a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, come back to South China. You established, a, for example, a kitchen uh, during to, uh, according to German standards, and uh, yeah. I think this was also kind of difficult to convince the, the people to, uh, that, uh, uh, for hygienic reasons and things like that, that uh, the production should be different than in the rest of China, so to say. It was very hard. It was very hard. The construction workers laughed at us many mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. Like. It's not even about hygiene, it starts with very easy things like if I look in this room, there are um, plugs all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like in China, they were like, we were like, okay, we want to have plugs mm -hmm. like 70 centimeters mm -hmm. distance, we want to have plugs mm -hmm. in the room because we don't want to have cables going through the room. Yes. And it was, they couldn't understand that. Yes. Like we had to force them, we were like, hey, we are paying you the money. Mm -hmm. Please do it like we wanted. Mm -hmm. And it was very hard to accept that, to, mm -hmm. to really do that, even though we paid them mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. Very small things, very small details where they, we talk complete different languages. Mm -hmm. Like, really. So, and also, sure, we were not experienced mm -hmm. as well. We, we had a complete, we had a 180 square meter place mm -hmm. with nothing inside. Mm -hmm. We did the electricity, we did everything ourselves. Mm -hmm. Not ourselves, but we had construction mm -hmm. workers, but we had to tell them what to do. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was hard. It was, but we had a great assistant. She helped us a lot to mm -hmm. come along with, with, the, with the workers. And mm -hmm. at the end, we did something which was, quite nice. I, mm -hmm. I think I showed, showed you pictures yes, as well. Yes. And like our, I told before, we had an Italian partner mm -hmm. who at the first time when he came to the production was not our partner. Mm -hmm. 
he came in and he was like, oh, wow, I, I'm not in China. Is that China? <laughs> yes, yes. So it was nice. It was good, yeah. So just thinking about students that uh, finish their studies here at Castle School and that want to go to China, what would you recommend uh, them? Should they also do their own business? Should they hire in a, let's say, German company or in a Chinese company? I mean, what can I... If somebody wants to do his own business, mm -hmm. he should do his own mm -hmm. business, sure, but nobody should think that doing your own business is easier than starting to work for somebody, for sure not. Like, sure. nothing is, even to start to work for a company is not easy, I'm sure about mm -hmm. that. I never did it, actually, <laughs> but, yes, yes, yes. but I'm sure nothing is easy, doing business is not easy. Yeah, if, even if I, uh, even I prepared to go to China, I still saw that I didn't think it will be as hard as it was at the mm -hmm. end. <laughs> like, yes. you, have a, you have a picture in your mind, like, okay, China is raising at the moment, mm -hmm. and there you can go and as a, perhaps like if you do your own company you can grow very fast mm -hmm. and, 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 and get rich. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's not that easy. Like anything you do actually you have to be really passionate about it. Mm -hmm. You really have to like it. Mm -hmm. And the first thing is you have to do good job. Mm -hmm. If you don't do a good job, if you don't do something which gives people something, you will not earn money with mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So But if you really like something and you want to do your own business, yeah, do it. In China, it's possible. <laughs> okay. And now another question. Just uh, think about uh, some small or mid-sized company that wants to go to China. What should they focus on? Or what will be the hurdles they have to be aware of? A middle-sized company, uh, I mean, dealing with the government mm -hmm. is the first big thing. Mm -hmm the first big obstacle in, in, in China for sure. Mm -hmm. If you want to do a wholly foreign-owned company mm -hmm. um, in China, uh, it's secure for you because this stealing know-how is for sure an issue in China. Mm -hmm. So from that side you are secure. Mm -hmm. You can manage the company like you want to manage the company. Mm -hmm. That's also a very big advantage if you do a wholly foreign-owned. But at the other side, you have to do, deal with the government. Mm -hmm. And government makes everything much harder for you mm -hmm. if you're a wholly foreign than if you have a joint venture. Because in a joint venture, your Chinese partner for sure has connections somewhere mm -hmm. where he can uh, help you with government mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. But on your own, you have to be very, very precise and exact mm -hmm. not to get trouble with the government. And mm -hmm. the, The worst thing in China that can happen is to get trouble with the with the government. Yes, because they are really powerful in China, yes. and they really tell you what to do in China. Yes. So, if you can find people you can work with together, mm. Chinese people, mm. somehow you can build a trust base with them. Mm. For sure, it's better to have Chinese partner. Yes. to do business in China. You can yes. grow much faster. You have infrastructures, mm -hmm. perhaps, that they mm -hmm. already have in China. Mm -hmm. You have all the connections they already have mm -hmm. in China. Perhaps they have... Um, I mean, they have also ideas, Chinese. I mean, mm -hmm. they know the market better. They know mm -hmm. the people better. Sure, they can help you. Yes. What they need from you is the know-how about the product, perhaps, you bring in mm -hmm. there, and mm -hmm. perhaps the management abilities you bring mm -hmm. with you from Germany that is, I think for sure valuable in China. Mm -hmm. So if this if you can put this together, mm -hmm. it's for sure a big advantage. Mm -hmm. But very hard to find the right people. And you need time and money. Yes. That's that's very important. Like yes. without time and without money, it's nearly impossible. You cannot go to China and be like, okay, I have to start to earn money, yes. otherwise I can't survive. Yes. That's not possible. Yes. That's not put, that will not work for sure. Okay, Dennis, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, and it was a very interesting insight uh, to your business in China. And I wish you good luck. Thank you. I know you have already some 90 employees in China. Yes, yes. And that's true. Uh, I don't know if you want to tell us your, your sales numbers, but they are sales impressive. numbers are quite good. We have, we came from a company last year doing around. 
700,000 euros, we build it up to a company that makes 2.8 million euros revenue. And it is quite okay. <laughs> Great. Okay. Again, thank you very much, Dennis Akovic. Thank you.